Boone County to do HVAC work out of Public Works. Uh, myself, Jess Squires, Larry, Larry, and Cliff. I think even Eric helped uh, going through that building, finding out what the hot spots, the cold spots, uh, the IT room, make sure we checked everything. Um, most of that equipment is original to the building being built back in the 80s, early 80s. Um, most of it is either barely running or is not running. Uh, my suggestion is we do the whole building for 77000 not to exceed. Uh, new heat pumps, high efficient uh, gas furnaces for backup heat, just like we did at uh, the EMS building on Bill's side. Uh, payback should be pretty quick. I know talking with Larry just a minute ago, the electricity bill out there is pretty high, so hopefully this will bring it down and bring it back in line. Questions? So is there two different proposals here? Because I'm not... I mean, I'm uh, seeing a not to exceed 43,080. You may have, yes, there was two proposals. Uh, and, and then a 30,000 too, or? I guess so. The first proposal was doing part of the building. Just part of the building, and then I went in, uh, had Jeff send me what would be to do the rest of the building for 77. Uh, to me, it just makes sense to pull all that old equipment out, put all the new stuff in. Especially you know, a lot of those electric baseboards you can't even get to anymore because they have desks tucked up against them and there's nowhere to move the desk. I apologize, I should have brought you this information a little sooner, but I just got it a while ago. Um, the other one attached would be the one behind the building, the one that just had it since the building was constructed. Uh, the engineering section I know has been in there over 25 years, so uh, it's time, time to replace them. So. And I don't see Brian in here, but he, I'm sure he could attest to at least getting the unit in the IT room to help eliminate a lot of the dirt and debris in his units would help him out there too. Our AC yeah. out there and our, we're actually, we're going to try and separate our file server room to where we can keep some of the dust and stuff out of there. With our business out there, you know, our building is always dusty, so and, um, it's just helpful. Hopefully, it helps the computer equipment last a little longer. Oh, yeah. If they've ever got water in there, I got plenty of corn. <laughs> <laughs> I think it makes the most sense to just do it all at one time and we're done. So come out of capital improvements. Yeah. So was that? We had 90 in there for it. Oh, okay. Well, that's even better. I was trying to remember what we had on there as far as budget and yeah, we what we were at on the list. So. so when you say the whole building, are you talking about the uh, the talking. garages too, or? Not the garage, garage, no. So just the meeting room. The, the just big, just the, the office. Right. Engineering office, the meeting room, where all the guys have their lunch and their meetings. Um, was that other office right there where? The GIS. Or, yeah, okay. I think so. Um, and then so all the, the front offices. So yeah. the meeting room, the lunch room, but it doesn't include all the garage bays on mm. both ends? No. No. They're non heated. The only one that is heated is the mechanics bay. Uh, the other end's not heated. Should be a 20 by 20 duck work. Uh, it's just been patched and patched and patched. You guys good? Yeah. Okay. So if you could approve the cooperative agreement and then the proposal from Air Service. Air Systems. Oh, I'm sorry, Air Systems. Okay.
move that we approve the cooperative purchase agreement with Boone County for HVAC services. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I move we approve and sign the contract with Air Systems for the Cole County Public Works HVAC system. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 What I think I'm going to jump around. Let's go ahead and do the MSP grant application letter, and that way we can we can get you out of here if that's okay. He's got one here. So uh, David and Ryan are from the city are here to talk about um, a revised letter to the Economic Development Association um, pertaining to the grant application that they submitted a month or two ago, give or take. Uh, the first letter um, uh, with feedback from the EDA, they wanted something more firm in the commitment of funding towards the project. And so, David and Ryan, do you want to expand upon that? Sure. So, in working with the EDA and our, our liaison uh, to the uh, to the EDA, they kind of go through the packet and make comments on what they would like to see strengthened and changed. And so, one of the comments that we got was um, that they would like to see the funding mechanism a little a little bit more strongly worded because our our uh, matching funds for the grant are the capital improvement sales tax, the joint city county uh, project. And so currently we have $1.6 million identified for MSP. Kind of informally, they would like to see, um, because Cole County is a separate political subdivision, they'd like to see uh, a little bit more specific commitment to the, uh, to the $1 million of that joint city county that is controlled by Cole County, um, identified specifically for MSP. So uh, this letter here um, is, is written as a statement of intent, basically saying, you know, we have a process where we enter into the cooperative agreements for these joint city county capital sales tax projects. Um, when it is time to execute the, uh, the cooperative agreement for that project, we intend to commit the $1 million under the processes that we usually use. Um, it is, and then it says, uh, it, here it's uh, specifically it's in the intent of Cole County to formally commit uh, these funds to the project through a cooperative agreement at that time. So this isn't binding. This is merely a, a statement of intent to EDA showing that Cole County is on board with the project and on board specifically um, with the funding that is being proposed in the grant matching uh, the matching funding that is specifically. They just want a little bit more information, always. I'm good with it. I mean, we committed the money in the sales tax and we ran that to the MSP project, so. Yep, me too. I don't have any questions as far as that goes. This is just saying, like I said, another letter saying that that's the intention. So will we be building the roads uh, before the development happens or after the development happens and well in some ways we have it set up in the grant application that we wouldn't uh, necessarily have to be finished with the construction until June of 2024 so you know in that time I'm assuming that the largest majority of the hotel conference center um, parking facilities stuff would all be finished or we would be building them somewhat simultaneously but certainly I think the road in front of the hotel which would ultimately serve the hotel would be something that would be built in the latter stages of the construction of that building you know some familiar similarly to you know how you would you know kind of see a just a building site plan constructed with the building coming first and then the, the site elements coming near the end is how I envision that happening probably some some grading work to help access the construction site so yeah, the five final finishes would be done probably after the, the building is built because you don't want to build the building and build the road and tear up the road, you know, taking equipment over it. But, uh, but yeah, I would say simultaneously with some, some staging going in there. And then uh, just 
curious. Um, obviously, there was an article in the paper this morning about the TDD for the MSP site that was uh, submitted to the circuit court. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. So uh, the TDD, uh, the MSP Transportation Development District, um, there was a petition that was filed last week uh, to create a TDD. So uh, the TDD process is a little unique. You actually have to ask permission from the circuit court to form a TDD, and you actually have to name the Missouri State uh, Highways and Transportation Commission as a respondent on that petition. So that was filed last week. Uh, MHTC is still uh, doing their review on that. There should be a hearing on that within the next month or so. And then um, the, the, uh, the intention is that the district would be formed and then a uh, sales tax would be put in place um, in order to help fund the, uh, some of the improvements. It'd be the transportation related improvements over there. And so um, if you recall back to the, um, to the overall master uh, proposal that was submitted by Chesterfield and Arcturus, um, total public infrastructure, transportation related infrastructure is over $10 million. So between, the, uh, between the, uh, this grant, the EDA grant, and the TDD, and uh, things like TIF, and the CID, which was formed uh, previous, you know, we've kind of taken pots of money from a bunch of different places to put together to do all the public infrastructure. So the TDD is you know, one portion of the transportation infrastructure, and the, this grant is another funding mechanism for the, for the same infrastructure. So. so is that uh, is that TDD based on, I mean, a lot of the original proposal from Arcturus was, um, some office building and some residential properties, uh, townhomes and different things. And so how do those types of businesses, how do they generate that sales tax? They don't. So, so TDD do, using only a sales tax only generates money through a sales tax. So if there are components in there that do not generate sales tax, then they, then they, you know, they just don't generate sales tax. And so that's part of the reason why we are trying to draw in a few different funding sources is really broaden that menu that we can then draw from so that way we are not boxed in and say okay we have to do re uh, retail because we have to have um, this whole thing generating retail sales tax uh, we want to be able to keep the ability to have mixed uses in there and so that's the reason why we're kind of using a lot of different tools here so we can maintain that for the information. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm good with moving forward too. So. Okay. Anyway, do we need to vote on that? Or? Uh, yes. Yeah. So what are we what are we voting on? <laughs> uh, make a motion to sign the MSP grant application letter. Okay. Do we have one of those? Revised, maybe revised letter because they had done one. Well, it's it's a it's an it's addition. An it's addition. a second letter. Okay. It's not a revision. It's yeah. just kind of more information. Yeah. We have a letter here. Yeah. Move that we sign the letter of intent for with uh, the city of Jefferson's application for EDA DR grant funding. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Go back to uh, Thank you. Thanks for coming. signing of 2020 2021 DSSSF grant award. This is a grant that we sign every year. It's supplementation funds for the post certified deputies. We put in for 45 positions. Um, and uh, we got approved for anybody under that was making under 45000 a year. This was a grant award. Yes. I move that we sign the Deputy Sheriff Salary Supplementation Fund sub award. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.
the ESO resigning the contract. I move that we resign the ESO contract. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Boy, we're just moving right along here, man. <laughs> there you go. Okay, the CAD integration contract. So this is just integrating the CAD so that the image trend or the ESO and the uh, so that the uh, BPCR and uh, the CAD system communicates. So uh, just an interface. We were able to get the pricing down about $2,700 uh, from their initial quote. This is what Zerker? That's correct, sir. Central Squ Zerker is now Central Square. They were purchased. I move that we sign the CAD integration contract with Central Square. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Lucas CPR device annual maintenance contract. So this is the contract they're currently going out of contract for maintenance purposes. Um, so this is a one-year contract. Um, our goal is next year um, is to try to get a two-year, but we only budgeted a one-year uh, when we talked to Kristen. So we had them change it to a one-year, and then next year uh, we'll go further. Those are relatively expensive devices, and if they have to be repaired, they can get pretty costly. So, and that's for the the CPR machines. I move that we sign the annual maintenance maintenance contract for the Lucas CPR devices with Stryker. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. Do we need to vote on this purchase order too or is that all but one of the same? Sign that one instead of the one you just signed. <laughs> Sorry. No, not to get there. Okay. Thank you. Annual renewal for adult brain injury service coordinator contract. You just keep signing, buddy. Okay. <laughs> this is our um, annual renewal with um, Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services for the adult brain injury service coordinator. So this um, contract pays for Shallon. Uh, to work out of our office, you know, that she um, does work in several counties, but uh, this pays for all of her salary, um, rent, and travel. Okay. Good? Yeah. Maybe that we sign the annual renewal for adult brain injury service coordinator contract with DHSS. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Bid award of 2020 19. Telephone and video visitation services, Colt County Jail. So we went out to bid. You're not going to get the fancy tab because Jeff is on, is on uh, vacation. But uh, my staff went through uh, the five applications. We're recommending uh, Securus Technologies. Um, we did it for a couple reasons, or for a few reasons. One is they live monitor all our video sessions, so they have people that are watching <coughs> these, and then they live monitor the phone calls. Uh, they're local and then they also will allow us to use the uh, guarded exchange which uh, if we have to uh, use them to download phones it's usually $500 a phone and they're throwing that in since they own that company they'll do that for free uh, systems capable of having video units conducting all of them simultaneously so there's 23 units so we could be doing 23 video visitations at a time versus what we have right now is three this is not something that we pay for, they pay us. Okay, so who are you recommending? Securus Technologies. And what was the amount? Or Well, there's really, there's not an amount because, like I said, they pay us. There's a, there is oh, they a, pay us? Yeah. <laughs> they charge the people. Yeah, they charge whoever using the phone calls or the oh. video visitation, and we get part of that. I see. Good? Yeah. Move that we award the bid to Securus. Is that right? 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, unfinished business. Discussion of law enforcement growth. <coughs> Okay. Okay. New business. No. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. On the unfinished business, can I do some unfinished business? It was late yesterday before I before I had uh, finished with the vendor, so I'm not on the agenda. But but under oh, she's been on the agenda right. okay. yep. several times before. So it's really old business that never got solved, as far as the security glass. Yes. Yeah. when you came down and looked at moving the desk forward and everything it, it is just too expensive and we did look at different aspects of doing that three more you know three more ordering three more uh, glass sizes the electrical for the electrical they want to put a pole in the middle of the floor along with the hallway being congested I mean it just is not to work for so I went back to the original quotes, and what I would lean towards myself is the first one. It is very similar to what the assessor has in place right now, and that would work for us too. And I think it is the least expensive of the quotes. And I just brought back up the three initial. You probably have four quotes from previous. But I think Rob would do a good job. And I think his first quote is the one that would work best for our office. So that's option two? I put it first. It is option two on the quote, but I put it on top of your sheet there. So it would be the first one you look at. Yeah, initially we were looking at option one and the difference is it has the enclosure vertical and horizontal. Yeah, the top and the bottom, but option two would work. It's it looks really nice. I'm fine with if that's what you want to do. I mean we looked at some different options and do some different <laughs> things out there. Um, the other ones would have been a lot more expensive. Yeah. But if this will work for your office <coughs> That's what you want to recommend, and it costs less, so not opposed to the costing less idea. <laughs> yep. So. And as time goes on, we're finding sharing that hallway between the collector and the reporter is just really tough. <coughs> There's enough room. <coughs> Just don't have the room. Well, somebody can do a whole Practicing in the garage. <laughs> Broken three of them already. Hmm. I'm going a long way, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm Sorry, fine. Sam. I'm fine with option <laughs> two. Option two? Yep, yeah. I'm good. Yes. 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 Um, do okay. we need to? Thank you so much. Vote on that. <coughs> just want to approve the proposal submitted by Brady. <coughs> I move that we appro approve the proposal from Brady's for option number two for the recorder's office. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. Judy, do you want these back? Do we have any other unfinished business? I don't need it. You need a copy for something or another. Thanks. Do you want your Sam? Yeah. You can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, any other unfinished? 
Okay, new business accounts payable review. There's one invoice, a couple of them we need to pay, so I'd ask for approval accounts payable pending review. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and Kristen says we have to do this first, signing of the management represent, representation letter for our Williams Keepers. And just so you know, there are donuts there also courtesy of Williams Keepers. It's not a bribe or anything, but anybody that wants a donut. It's weird, they're right by me. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So at the beginning of the audit every year, we sign an engagement letter. Um, at the end of the audit, we sign a management representation letter. It really just says that we fulfilled all of our responsibilities related to the audit and provided them with all the information that they needed. I just need that signed before they can present you with the final. Move that we sign the management letter for from Williams Keepers. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Williams Keepers to present 2019 audit. And this is Ashley Rowling from Williams Keepers. She's going to present the audit. Morning. 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 As Krista mentioned, I'm Ashley Rowling. I'm an audit senior with Williams Keepers. And I worked as an in charge on the audit this year with Amanda Schultz, who's the partner. She had another board meeting at the same time this morning. Um, so we're just going to go over this year's CAPR, which is not this whole thing. Um, in the first couple pages of the reports you have, there's um, a summary report. So the summary report just is a very high level of this year's CAPR, which is the comprehensive annual financial report for the county, which is as of December 31st, 2019. So the CAPR contains multiple different sections. Uh, there's an introductory section, the financial section, which we'll cover shortly, and a statistical section, which starts on page 80 which contains um, a lot of good information about trends in the county. You want to take a look at that. Um, so we're just going to go very high level of the financial statements. We did issue an unmodified or clean opinion on the financial statements, which is the best audit opinion you can get on financial statements. Um, as Kristen mentioned with the management rep letter, uh, management is responsible for the preparation and the fair presentation <coughs> of the financial statements. And that also includes the design and implementation of internal control. Uh, Kristen prepared the basic financial statements and schedules and reviewed and approved the footnotes that we prepared. We do use our judgment in determining how to audit the county. That judgment is based, based on a risk-based approach, so we don't audit every single transaction of the county. Um, and we do focus on areas that could potentially be misstated. We did evaluate the appropriateness of accounting policies and the reasonableness of significant estimates and the overall financial statement presentation. Um, with governmental accounting, there are two sets of financial statements. The first is the governmental accounting, the government-wide financial statements, which are full accrual and include all of the funds of the county, as well as all capital assets, long-term debt, and other liabilities. And then we have the fund financial statements, which are separated into governmental funds, which is the revenue from taxes and other sources, and that uses the modified accrual basis of accounting. And we have the proprietary funds, which are revenues from user charges that uses full accrual accounting. We included a very high level chart of the government wide financial statements from the past few years. Uh, the management's discussion and analysis on pages 4 through 24 goes through a detailed review of any of those fluctuations. We also performed a single audit this year as the county expended over $750,000 in federal funds. A single audit basically just increases the work on our end and also requires us to issue a few additional reports. The county expended about $1.2 million in federal funds and all of those programs are listed on the schedule of expenditures of federal awards or the CEFA, which is on pages 105 and 106. The two reports we issue along with the single audit are internal control and compliance related to financial reporting and internal control and compliance related to major federal programs and we had no findings on either of those reports. I know that was very high level, but any questions on the financial statement portion? Nope. 
Uh, we also have the auditor's communication letter, which you'll find in the back of this bound copy. Um, this letter contains different comments about our audit process that we're required to communicate under professional standards to an entity's governing board, which in this case is the commissioners. So a few highlights from this letter. Uh, we didn't have any transactions that we considered unusual or significant, and there was no changes in accounting policies during the year, except for FASB Statement 84 on fiduciary activities, which basically just added a statement, which I believe is on page 34 this year. There are a few, or two new standards that will be coming in future years. One is GASB 87 on leases, which will put leases on the balance sheet. And then there's GASB 89, accounting for interest costs incurred before the end of the construction period. So we'll definitely work with Kristen on those um, in the coming years. We still have some time on both of those. We did look at the county's estimates on the financial statements and found them reasonable. Um, there's a listing of the most significant estimates uh, that are included in the financial statements here. We found the accounting records to be in good order and did not propose any significant audit entries. And we had no disagreements with management on accounting or auditing issues and no difficulties in performing the audit, which we did perform it all remotely this year. But we appreciate Kristen and Jen and Debbie's help in getting it completed timely as usual. Uh, the other letter that is in the back of this bound copy is the management letter. Uh, the scope of our engagement does not include an opinion on the adequacy of internal controls, but we still do evaluate internal controls to develop our audit procedures. Um, we did not identify any material weaknesses in internal control. We do have a couple best practice recommendations included in that letter, though. So that is all I have to cover. Appreciate the opportunity to work with you guys again this year. Is there any other questions? No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks Thank you. for the donuts. Hey, no problem. I'll tell Lyle. <laughs> <laughs> and in conjunction with the audit by state statute, we have to put the financial statement in the paper. So this is a copy that I need to sign that will appear in the paper. I just really haven't had a lot of time to go through this, so we just got this on Friday. wasn't the same thing that was presented last week. Um, that's just a copy of the statements that are in here, just in a format that can be put in the paper. Right. And if you want, you can wait on that. That's, that's not a big deal. Put that back on the agenda. I was just trying to do right. it at the same time. So. Yeah, I was just trying to look at the totals, and I just they just don't seem to add up. Maybe I'm not adding them right. So that fund balance end of year is 12, 12 million.
each individual button there. Yeah, like I said, I had, if you guys want to approve it, that's fine. I just haven't had time to look at it. Well, I mean, we, I just can, don't, we can just take. It's hard to. We can just do it. It's hard to just look at a financial statement next week, and say, right. you know. Okay, we'll just roll. We'll hold it till next week. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll do the first reading of budget adjustment number 12 because I know the CARE Act is going to take a while. This is $58,008, no action today. This is CESF grant and emergency response. Uh, the sheriff could elaborate on it just a moment. No action today at the DOJ. It's just a grant that y'all approved uh, last week. Okay. Okay, we'll go back to the discussion of CARES Act consultant RFQ. So, you know, Jessica sent you those applications that you did receive from the different. They studied this Sunday. That's so, we just want a little guidance what you want to do. You want to, are you ready to pick one of them or interview two or three of them? How, how do you want to approach this? RFQ is a little different than the radar RFQs. So. Yeah, I think we ought to narrow it down at least because. <clears throat> Evidently, Montauk County, Cooper County, Boone County, they they are accepting applications. And well, we have had several calls. Yeah, I, I had a talk with Jamestown School Superintendent yesterday. I said, well, I thought Jamestown was in Montauk. He said, well, 30% of, of our student population is in coal. I don't know. <laughs> so, but... Uh, Yeah, this was. We have six or seven. There's six. Six. So we received six proposals. I think there's probably three that stand out, possibly four. Um, it's just you guys deciding do you want to interview and how many do you want to interview at this point? I think the Civic Solutions Group, which is out of New Jersey, that's the only thing I, they're, they're a long distance away. BKD out of Springfield, Missouri would be, uh, Those two and Brown Smith Wallace was the other one that were standing out, I think, of the city. Yeah, I got coming on site or I mean it's all probably going to be done over the phone isn't it? Um, I did have multiple questions um, during the process that Jessica sent all asking um, could they do remotely our answer was yes there are some things you can do remotely but there are requirements for you to be here in person for certain meetings and things like that so uh, we may need to decide how much in person you want them to be here So that's the case. The <clears throat> Brown Smith Wallace is out of St. Louis. BKD is out of Springfield. Civic Solutions. Civic Solutions New is Parsippany, New Jersey. But uh, Christy, had you said you had done some? things with BKD or? They're the firm that does all the audits for the community health centers just in Missouri. So that's how I need to recommend their name because I'm on the board of the health center. I definitely think we need to narrow it down and then possibly is that an 
in-person interview? Is it a phone interview? Is it? Um... You could probably get BKD and the one from St. Louis Brown Smith Wallace to come. Uh, Parsippany, New Jersey, I would think. It'd, Yeah, and I'll go over. This was a lot of reading. <laughs> it was. It was uh, right. You want to schedule for Tuesday afternoon? So we're going to start with BKD, Brown, Smith, Wallace, and who else? Civic Solutions. Some of them that I purviewed over. I mean, did any of them stand out as having any kind of expertise in in COVID-related stuff, or was it all just kind of accounts? Um, there, I know there was more than one that referenced their um, other work that they have done on federal money. Um, I can't reference it at the moment because. They're all kind of going together <laughs> in my brain. But um, yeah, I do think there were at least one or two that referenced their prior work with federal funding. And I'd say a lot of people have probably dealt with federal funding, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're in the know on all this COVID stuff, which is very unclear as to <laughs> how or what it can be spent on. So. I'm good with scheduling those three if they can and um, trying to develop some questions to see what their contacts or their acquaintances know of, of how and what that can be spent on because a lot of questions. Yeah, and I sent you um, a copy of that Friday uh, Treasures so I, I've tried to listen to that a couple times today and didn't get to, I'm hoping that's going to maybe answer some questions too, but I don't know. If I could go ahead and start at one and then we'll leave uh, 40 minutes in between each one or, and then for you guys to maybe discuss. And I do think this would have to be enclosed because maybe the consultant fee would come up. I don't know. Could it be under closed? Yeah, so we don't, I mean, they didn't submit any kind of pricing at all. Mm -hmm. No. I, <laughs> For RFQs, you don't. Yeah. Because what you're doing is hiring on qualifications. Then after you, you make a choice, then you start negotiating price costs. It's like they do with engineering firms and architects. Yeah, but usually cost comes into play too, so. Might have great qualifications, but if you're charging a thousand dollars an hour, it's not reasonable. Well, at that so, point, you go yeah. to the next choice. <laughs> yeah. You just see, that's what we did with engineering firms. If we feel our price is way too high, and they're just going to be standards out there, or price range for eight firms, uh, they come in that high, we just go for the next one and tell them thank you and move on. 
So I guess. So I'm just trying to understand this. So, I mean, obviously we got three out of town firms and so we're going to interview them on qualifications and then we pick one and then we ask price and then if we say no, nope, then we go to the next one and ask price and then we, I mean, so. I think we, part of the interview process could include pricing. Like, yeah, I mean, I would think give us an estimated price session. and things like that. I would think we'd be able to do it in closed session because that's going to come up. I think it would be contract negotiation potentially. Plus, it then becomes an unfair advantage for one to another, especially if it's open. And you start talking about that. The last person knows what the first two have already recorded. <laughs> so maybe it's just qualifications first. That's typically how engineers, they have a breakout of hourly rates based on different people within their uh, scope. Professional engineers is so much, usually an hour, and, and uh, surveyors and everything else. I mean, I would assume that this would be something similar. Typically, they wouldn't submit that with their right. proposal. But that would be something we could ask for. I mean, we don't know how much typically we're going to spend, you know, I mean, they're traveling from somewhere to here. I mean, they got travel fees. They got all these other fees. They got they got their time and what's and what I all that's, that's going to cost. That's going to have to be a question as well. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're talking to someone out of state. Yeah. Right. Um, you're going to have to figure in those travel fees. Right. And take that into consideration. I.e. George Sansusi. Yeah, I was going to say, we're doing it open. If we, the last one is going to have the best advantage because they can just, you know, lowball it, but then hit us with fees or I don't know. They have references too. I asked Christy because two of them had listed Sedwood County, Kansas, which I think is Wichita, you said. Sedgwick. So, huh? Sedgwick County is Wichita. Yeah, I, which I didn't know. I just wanted to make sure because they're, there are some references too that that they've given, but uh. so we do. Do we need to not do it in, in a commission meeting and have others present, and just do it outside of a commission meeting and um, similar to the public works doing it with an engineer? If only one of you want to have the direction that the other two would then need to vote I, on it. So. No, I think we need to. So. We all do it in open session, and you're gonna. I mean, so <laughs> you start eliminating people, and they're gonna be watching. Yeah, so, no, I think we you need know, to. That, that becomes an unfair advantage, and so the others may say, Well, you know, you guys threw all these other people out, why am I gonna waste my time? So, I mean, because you're at some point, you're gonna negotiate a contract. At that point, you can put it under bids and contracts. Close. Okay, so it's just going to be an interview, and we aren't going to talk price then. Okay. And we might invite BKD and Brown, Smith, and Wallace to come if they want to come next year. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be everyone has, yeah, has the, the ability to be here. Yeah, we prefer that yeah, you're here in person. Yeah, if yeah, you can, then we'll make yeah. other arrangements. Okay. Okay, we'll start next Tuesday at 1, and then we'll just keep it to just our qualifications. And then hopefully Jessica and Kristen can work together on some um, questions and what we would want to make sure we accomplish. Are you going to schedule appointments?
get some type of shared sheet or something that would have the questions on there, and then maybe we'll have some other questions as well. So, so we'll try to get that out before that meeting. So then maybe if you have other things, we want to be consistent on what we ask all three of them. So. Okay. Okay. I think we covered everything. Anything else, Mr. Jeff? Before closed session? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I will say that, um, you know, we did have this emergency plan guide that the courthouse did. I did receive yesterday the one for the annex building and the Carnegie building for us to review, a draft copy. So I am going to um, send that out. See and maybe some of the key people in this building to make sure we got everything covered that we want to before I'll come back and ask you if we can make these things a little flip chart things. Again, it's just for the building anyways. Yeah, because we probably need to remember to, to let Chris and his office know to get the hell out of there. Yeah. Well, we'll have to work on that too, on the procedures of how, who's to do what. Yeah. You send that to us. I can. Yeah, if you would, please. Um, can we include Brian on that or something? I mean, I don't know if there's a way to. Obviously, we got that new phone system going in. I don't know if there's a, a way that we can bring something through that phone system that would alert everyone. And so I you think that's send kind it of to separate that. from this. This is just telling employees what to do, where to go. Right. You know, when, when something happens, but for us management to make sure we get everybody out of the building and that, yes. I did talk to Brian about that and he he said the new phone system would do that and as long as we set up people in sections of who we want to, you know, so but then directing who to speak over that speaker, you know. So right. This is just a guide for the employees, but definitely include the assessor's office in on what we have so far. I would think you'd include all the department directors, all the Elected officials. Yeah, and the safety committee hasn't been active for quite some time, but we could start with the safety committee. I mean, start there. But again, it's just people in the annex building and the party building, so. Yeah, that's on that committee. Yeah, that's on the building side. Yeah, yeah. So, I'll do my best to get it out there, but. But so I'll bring it send back it to you. everybody. Okay. <coughs> I'm just saying everybody might have an idea. Yeah. And then I'll bring it back to you guys I, for the final. I don't know if you want that much I, input on yeah, it, but yeah, I'm coordinating. Them. But well, we all go over to the sheriff's department. He has refreshments and snacks. And, uh, yeah. But you have people in different parts of the building that may have different ideas and have seen things differently. So I don't think it hurts to ask. And we can leave that up to each elected official to present it to their team and yeah. the, the, the departments to their people. That. And then that way you just have the input coming from one person instead of 300. Yeah. I think we've had one department too, or one elected official where they, some of their people chose not to, not to leave the building anyway. So, you know, if you can encourage them. To okay, we'll work on that. Sam, can I mention something? So we're working on a few new things for our website. We're trying to, um, from the data that we get from Department of Health and Senior Services about COVID, we're trying to tease out how many Cole County residents are being tested for COVID-19 every, and um, be able to report back those negative tests too. Because you, uh, when you look at the state website, they have a quota, I think of it's either 7,500 or 10,000 tests a day. So more and more people are being, you know, they're pushing out more and more tests. And I think that if we could show the number of negative tests that are being done in the county or for county residents, I think that is um, really important for people to see. So from the data we get from DHSS, we're trying to tease that information out so we can add it to the website. And we're also looking at adding some information to our front page that maybe um, gives the citizens an idea of the other communicable diseases that are happening in the county and the investigations that we're doing because COVID-19 has got so much attention. I think uh, a lot of people didn't realize that there's over 100 communicable diseases that are mandated to be reported to DHSS by doctors and we investigate most of those because of 
of the nature of them, whether it's animal bites or pertussis or um, salmonella or whatever. So we're looking at maybe doing a snapshot of those on our website um, so people can see that, you know, in addition to 61 cases of COVID, we've also had, you know, this many cases of salmonella, you know, this many cases of chlamydia and gonorrhea and syphilis and um, E. coli or, or whatever else we've had going on in the county this year. So we're, we're looking to do some things like that on our website. And then I also wanted to mention that the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services and the Missouri National Guard will be putting on one of the community COVID testing events here in Cole County, July 7th, 8th, and 9th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So anyone who wants to have the COVID um, PCR test, the one where they stick the, uh, the swab up your nose, um, that tells you whether or not the virus is present in, um, you know, it's just a, uh, it's there or it's not, it could be dead and you could still be shedding the virus. This test just says whether it's there or not. Anyone can go for free those days and it's gonna be at our former building and um, the link to sign up for that, you have to sign up um, and make an appointment is on our website and also on DHSS's website. They did Monata and Osage last week and um, they've done several other communities, so it's kind of our turn. That's in your press release that you put out, correct? Um, we did not put a press the. We did send out a flyer, yes. People need to real they need to realize they need to schedule an appointment, right. not just to show yeah. up. If they show up, they'll direct them to go over probably to the old yeah. parking lot and fill it out online, and then yeah. get back in line. But it is better if they yeah. if they register to schedule. No, the awesome. press release I sent out yesterday was unfortunately about our second death. Oh yeah. So, yep. Any other questions? Nope. Anything else? I don't know. We'll make a motion. We go into closed session pursuant to section 610-021 of the revised statutes of Missouri uh, for legal actions, section 610-0211, and security systems, section 610-0219. So are you making a motion? I made a you motion. You saying you're entertaining. I made a motion. <laughs> Don't yell at me. I was asking. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't clear. Uh, I'll second your motion. Okay. Roll call. Sam. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Chris. Yeah. So testy today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we got we got. Yeah.